Michael um, uh, said we should talk to you. So, and that's all I need. If Michael says, same with Bobby, if Bobby or Michael say to me, you need to talk to this person, uh, here, the, here you are on the screen. So great to meet you, Tom, founder of Desert Island Survival. Michael, how did you meet Tom? What, 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 what was it that uh, inspired you to have him on, on the screen here with you? Yeah, well, first, first can I say I'm, I'm impressed with the colourful language that you've had on the show this morning. So congratulations to everyone who contributed to that. I enjoyed that a lot. Yes, um, you did, didn't you? <laughs> Don't try it. No, no, I won't. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know, you know me. A hand gesture He's too much before, of a gentleman. All right, go maybe on. Before yeah. we <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I met I met Tom, uh, I met Tom Williams at um, Mutual Friends 40th birthday party in Caparica Beach. It was about a month ago, I think it was. Tom, wasn't it? And um, we got we got chatting and um, yeah, it just sounded like a really interesting guy. I mean, I meet a lot of people who have their own business in Portugal. Tom's business is extremely exciting and interesting. So I thought it'd be a great guest for you guys to have on and, you know, just talk about something a little bit, a little bit different. Um, so, yeah, um, Tom, maybe if you could just give a, just a, a brief introduction into, into what you do. Before you do, yeah. before you do, sorry, um, you are watching a Good Morning Portugal show, not Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> check, check, like, check Heron out there. Yeah, I was at a beach party on Caparica the other day and I bumped into this desert island guy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, back to you. That's the way he rolls. Um, <laughs> yeah, I used to uh, work jobs where I felt like my soul was dying in a cubicle for many, many years, and I often lusted for being marooned on a tropical desert island. And... <laughs> As, as one does. And I, yeah, I had this weird idea. Um, and yeah, that was seven years ago. And now it seems to have come to fruition. And I run a company called DesertIslandSurvival.com. Uh, I create castaway experiences on uninhabited tropical desert islands in Panama, wow. the Philippines, and <laughs> Tonga. Um, and you mentioned Indonesia. I'm going to Indonesia with my family in a few weeks' time as a business expense trip of course to go and try and find new islands oh, so yeah, island hunting yeah, yeah. with Very my cool. with my six-year-old boy um it'll be his first time so uh wow. so Where yeah are going? we are going to some well basically we have to find islands where almost no one knows we can't go to bali because you know it no, wouldn't no, feel no. uninhabited <laughs> um so we've got to find like it's, i call it like this goldilocks zone where it's got to be close enough to tourism where there still are like infrastructure you know we need be able to get in there easily enough we need hospitals we need hotels yeah. uh exactly but then not too close that it breaks this illusion so you don't want lights on the horizon and boats so we're going to places that no one's really heard of one called the anambas which is not far from singapore but just no one goes there uh, apparently it's like the maldives of of asia will of, well, of east asia we'll see and um and then a little island uh, chain of java Going to check wow, you out. I love in awesome. this backstory. I think Bobby's getting ready to book on this one of these. Uh, do you like the sound <laughs> of this, Bobby? So far, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of I'm VIP only, <laughs> I'm not doing any survival stuff. I find it hard to <laughs> up on the plane. Uh -huh. I tell you what, it's a good, if, you thinking, know, for your best um... employees, uh, this would be a great team builder, though, wouldn't it? If you send them off to do it, do, uh, do they all have to come back? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of your English Irishman and um. Uh, what, a desert and island it, yeah. guy walk into a desert island. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> but we, we can relate to that, uh, being in the cubicle. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't spent too much time in cubicles in corporate situations, mm -hmm. but uh, enough to know that I would rather be on a desert island. So that's a fantastic start to the story, Tom. How did you track? I mean, that's what people want to know, right? Is how did you go from there and, and, you know, being in the gilded corporate cage and then suddenly finding yourself here in Lisbon and now launching this business and having people on as castaways effectively? Yeah, I mean, it's, I can go the long convoluted story, but I won't bore you too much. But, you know, I was a complete failure at school. I was the fattest kid at my school. I came bottom academically. Um, and then I did, you know, managed just get into university get an all right job working for a software company to the expectations of your parents and such but not really what I wanted to do and I found myself practically suicidal every day just like oh god mate there's got to be more to life than this and that was when I was 27 and then I was having some pints with my mate Paul and he told me that he was walking to the North Pole and I was like I don't want to be I don't want to be pigeonholed as a software salesman I need to walk to the North Pole so I walked to the North Pole so, I mean, it's obviously a roundabout way of getting there, but um, yeah, I did the opposite then, way, right? The warm way. Yeah, completely the wrong way to the tropics. And, um, the I'm just going out for a pint, and then you ring, yeah. you, ring up, you ring up five days later. It's like me and Paul decided to walk to the North Pole. I should, I'll be back in three weeks. I'm going for a pint. I might be some time. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, then I 
did then Pandora spots had opened and then I, I ended up meeting my wife I moved to Chile I lived in Chile for 10 years and I got there and the only job I could do because I didn't speak any Spanish was working in finance selling pensions and I found myself back in a cubicle so, oh yeah. god here it is again an old friend and uh and then yeah every day just like what can I do what can I do how can I how can I break free of this and um, and just came up with this ridiculous idea um, and I did this, I did it like concurrently while still working in finance. I still had that safety net in place of my job was building this business. And I bootstrapped the whole thing myself, like build a website. Because they, they say like being an entrepreneur is like jumping off a cliff and building a jumbo jet on the way down. And yes. I had to like work out how to, yeah, how to build a website, how to uh, set up a CRM system, how to advertise in social media, as well as the operations and logistics of finding Desert Islands instructors, learning all the bushcraft skills and uh, all the other, you know, incidental parts of it and so yeah just kind of went for it it's my first business and i'm yeah really fortunate that it seems to have taken off six seven years later well, is, it, so is it a bit like big grills type sort of uh you know like survival like the like the yeah. survival shows you see on the tv yeah it is i mean they're, ma they're mainly quite contrived and scripted so this obviously we don't but this is for people that want to learn the skills so for the first five days we're teaching them primitive bushcraft skills so how to use the land so how to make fire by friction, you know, rubbing sticks together, um, how to build shelters, weaving palms, making natural cordage from fibers, um, and how to you know, build traps and catch catch fish, identify wild edibles you can eat, and how to turn seawater into fresh water. So for five days, it's like survival light where people are learning all these cool skills. You know, we're giving them a bottle of rum, we're sleeping in hammocks, we're feeding them well, we're calling ah. the frogs slowly, you know, we're getting them kind of comfortable in this environment. Then after five days, you can use your beeper. Shit gets rich and we go oh, to a brand new part of the island <laughs> where were you Carl? Where were you? Yeah, you were too, yeah, you were too like this. We, need, we need a hand gesture let me know that's that be like, put your hand up and wait until Carl <laughs> he's not going to be able to monetize the video that's the only reason he's annoyed now you just... yeah <laughs> carry and, on yeah they basically the they to a new part of the island <laughs> oh um, yeah, they just have a machete, a hand knife, uh, some fish hooks, a bit of water and a sat phone and a medikit. And they go to a new part of the island and they have to put into practice these skills that they've learned. Survive for three yeah. days, find their own food, get a fire going. And then speedboat arrives laden with cold beers and they're rescued and now go to what feels like a 10-star hotel. Michael, Should when you do you wow, kill each other? That's, Bobby, that's, that, I was trying to ask that question uh, in the way that you just did. Um, but in a slightly different way, you know, like I'm thinking these, these people have learned uh, probably butchery and how to use a knife and they're getting hungry, aren't they? And you're with them on a desert island alone. I mean, that's a recipe for, um, you know, uh, being a little bit out there and for it to be going a bit pear shaped, I think. Uh, presumably in a contract, you agree not to eat your friends on this. Yeah, yeah. Stop with the waiver. Don't eat your mates. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy, it's easy. It's hey. in the T's and C's. If it, if it turns it into Lord of the Flies, then it's not going yeah, it to be. Um, did Paul make it back from the North Pole all right? <laughs> Paul never made it to the North Pole. He ended up joining the army and he couldn't commit. So I had to find two more people. But he's alive and well. That's, that's This is amazing. Absolutely now. incredible. So uh, a five-day training and then a, and then a three-day for real event, as you say, when <laughs> gets real. And um, <laughs> and this is all this is all happened. By the end of that, what? eight days in, in today nine and ten you must feel like an incredible human being really cathartic for people I, I didn't set it up as this like woo transformational travel kind of experience but i think there's something about you know recollect connecting with our paleolithic brains that you know they evolved to live this way we're hunter gatherers who are now living in this modern society our brains haven't caught up um, and the glove fits so well it hasn't and um it's and it's amazing when you take away the technology and you live with a circadian rhythm of sunrise and sunset and everyone just kind of slows down in nature how cathartic it is we find people reflect they you know for many people the first time they've got off the hamster wheel of life and stopped and look around we've had people come home and they've left their jobs they've left their partners they've lost like 20 kilos in weight they've um like gone on charitable pursuits and started helping homeless people it's, it's amazing like how it changes some, some people's values and stuff which i didn't like in any way created for that book it, it makes complete impactful. sense, doesn't it? And we now we have, you know, we're 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 um, sending kids to school on an industrial basis, aren't we? For what? How long? 
you know, from five to 18, sometimes to 25 or 35. Um, yeah. <laughs> and what we could do is just be giving them to you when they're teenagers. They could watch YouTube until they're about 15. Come and then they go away, go, go, go away with you for eight days and come back completely formed human beings. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, we, we, I, I mean, we could go off on an education tangent, but yeah, I mean, our education system is this one size fits all. And for kids that have you know, things like ADHD as such, we, you know, we, we make them mold to this, this system that doesn't normally fit. But when they come to environments like doing bushcraft, building shelters, everything seems to make sense to them and, and they work so well in nature. And it's amazing. We've had my, my friend does um, uh, courses for, for kids that are having learning difficulties and the transformation he sees in these kids is incredible. Really yep. This is so them. wonderful. Wow. Michael, thank you so much. I think Bobby and Michael have both got questions. You you first, Bobby. I, I I think also. You, and, and Mrs. <laughs> Ems here wants to ask you some questions as well. Bobby. No, I just got to say, like, your clients would not be families that would go together, fam or complete strangers that would just be, like, sort of joining different groups, or how do you like to focus them? Yeah, well, it's mostly you... made up of individuals who don't know each other. Um, so we'll have a maximum of 10 people on the trip. And uh, and then we also do private ones as well. So like groups of friends. We even had like a, a bachelor party. And, um, and we had uh, fathers and sons one, like five dads, five five sons who are teenagers oh. like, coming of age experience with their fathers, which yeah. is cool. Um, but yeah, mostly it's just people that don't know each other. That is, I mean, all of those scenarios sound fantastic, don't they? For the uh, yeah. bachelor party, do, do you show people how to homebrew in five days as well? I was going to say, did a guy get married after it? Yeah, <laughs> I, I imagine people split up when they come together with their families and friends. Yeah, and that's only happened once. That's only happened once. There you go. Or, what did do you have? Um, <laughs> like partners or things like that. After? I missed that. But going, we do make an island brew we, we 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 mix up yeast with pineapples and and such and we make like a three percent four percent uh island brew so yeah we do oh my we do goodness. ferment on the island as well that is of course you do uh michael sorry we, we lost your question in, in the, in the no worries in the well i was just going to say first like i love hearing stories like this from, from from entrepreneurs like tom because i think whenever whenever you have a business idea and everyone thinks it sounds completely crazy i think you're always on to something really special you know so i really i really respect what what you've done tom but my my question was um what was the first uh experience that you organized like what and what mistakes did you make and what did you learn from <laughs> if anything so i can imagine it must have been like just all right let's just go for it and see what happens yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my very first trip, I basically, I put out on Facebook, I got four friends to come along and they got four friends of theirs to come along. So it was a nice group of people, my mates who, you know, are going to take the piss out of me and then four people who I don't know. Um, and they, <laughs> it's not too bad, is it? Sorry. Guys. Um, and, um, and, you know, they, they were like, they gave me honest feedback, but they were like, dude, you're on something. This is, this is really special. It's a beautiful experience. And it, it went very well. But a better story perhaps was my third ever trip we always run with a main instructor and an assistant instructor, but I was bootstrapping this thing and I was running a whole trip on my own and it was rainy season, which we don't normally go. And it's, it's a hard time, there's bugs, there's thunderstorms. Anyway, on the very first night, our shelter started collapsing. So I started splitting some bamboo to like get this shelter back up. And as I did it, um, I managed to put my freshly sharpened machete through my tendon of my finger um, and uh, went straight through the flexor tendon. And so I was like running this class on my own with these eight Danish entrepreneurs. And I was just like, like you do. I'm just trying to swear. I'm trying to stop myself from swearing, as you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be on this course on the 11th. Sorry, carry on. And uh, and then I was just I had to. I was just lying there in my hammock, like popping coding. Like God, what do I do? Like, do I get another instructor in? Do I continue? Do I cancel the trip? And I had to really dig deep. And I ended up. I went and got it stitched up. I came back to the island, and I was doing a bow drill demonstration, and I felt it pop open again, and blood was oh. dripping off my elbow and nearly putting out the fire. But I was like, I must stoically continue. Um, so yeah, right at the beginning, there were some some rough times and some harder trips. Legend. Now, see, now it runs I, a bit smoother and better. If I was one of those Danish delegates, I'd be thinking to myself, "Is he winding us up here? Is this like fake blood?" And he's just trying to up the stakes a bit. To, 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 you know, you know how the, this happens, doesn't it? On on team building courses, you get some sort of what looks like an emergency event, yeah. but it's all been staged and planned for our personal yeah. development. 
But you, yeah. you really you really took one for the team there in actually doing it for real and putting that freshly sharpened machete through your tendon there and popping open again as you were spinning the um, spinning wood against wood, so to speak, um, and setting fire to your own blood in some sort of strange oh, ritual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, open. I, I had one question. Go on, Mrs. M. Right at the start, Tom, you said... Um, uh, something like um, I I was setting up my first business, or this would be my first business. Have you set up another business? Because I'm like this is such a, a wild idea, and it's obviously successful because you've been doing it for so long. But like, where do you go from here? I mean, have you set up another business? No, I haven't set up another business. But what we the problem with desert islands is that that there's not very many appropriate desert islands i've looked for for lots and we still only got three hopefully we can have a fourth but that's a bottleneck of the growth of the business and so i'm looking at creating the same five and three experience this is where the kids will come on i love it um <laughs> in different environments so we're doing one um hopefully in northern sweden um, we're going to be doing one in the Amazon where you can spend five days learning from different tri tribal members and then do three days surviving in the Amazon and then Very one cool. in the savannas of Africa as well. So kind of taking the same concept in different environments. Yeah, you flew off across right. Ireland. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say this Ireland, off Ireland, the Ireland. coast of Scotland. <laughs> Incredible. This is, I mean, we're after 10 o'clock now. Um, thank you for indulging us, Bobby. Thanks for sticking around. And Michael, I don't know if you've got any more questions because we have a, a legend in our midst here this morning. Uh, Tom of DesertIslandSurvival.com. You can book on these uh, adventures. Uh, disconnect your disconnect from the world immersing yourself in an authentic tropical paradise adventure is the strap line uh, bushcraft involved home brewing in the jungle i mean it just sounds amazing panama philippines tonga and indonesia turtle nesting swimming with humpback oh. these all sound like deviant sexual activities as well don't they <laughs> uh, phosphorus, <laughs> phosphorus I, just, I just had i just had one last question for tom and um, which yeah. i guess is probably the most important one seeing as this program is about portugal is and I don't oh, think yeah. I've this, but, but why um why did you choose Portugal for you and your family to live? Was it based on the lifestyle, the weather? Was it the fact that geographically perhaps you're quite well placed because you're kind of in the centre of everything? What, was there any particular reason, or you just decided? Yeah. To I mean, there's many, many reasons. We were living in Chile for 10 years. We moved to Thailand. We fell in love with Thailand. We could have stayed there. Um, but we, yeah, our family was drawing us back to Europe to be closer to their grandparents. Uh, um, and we also wanted more, more schooling options and a bit, you know, European civility and nice restaurants and culture. Um, and we wanted somewhere warm. We weren't going to go back to the UK. The zeitgeist was too negative for us. And so we, we, we okay, warm leaves us with Spain, Portugal, Italy, south of France. And we found the Portuguese people just to be immensely more pleasant and, and warm and generous and kind and that that's one of the main things that drew us here um and uh, and then our tax benefits as well um and but it was mostly we were just overwhelmed by how kind and generous lisbon really felt as a capital city just i don't think so we, we found that in the north of Thailand, this kind of warm spirit, and we we feel that we, we get that here, but we never thought we'd find that in Europe. So that's the big, Such a good big question, famous. Michael. Yeah, thank you for getting us back on point there with it being about Portugal. But, I mean, just so many amazing stories there, Tom, about what you're doing. Do please come back um, and tell us. I mean, whenever these are happening, do let us know, um, because the, this is so tempting. Bobby, is there anything you want, else you want to ask, Tom? I just like how fit do you have to be to go on one of these things? <laughs> <No. laughs> so most survival is is a mental challenge. Um, you know, the, the healthier and fitter your body is, the easier it is, I think, mentally. But no, uh, I have I was saying about someone losing like 30, 40 kilos. We had a quite an obese woman who who now does uh, marathon running. Um wow. and so she she managed it. We've had a 78-year-old from Stockport, David, who uh, who made it as well. Um, and I've had, you know, 13 year old kids on, on the family trip. So, um, yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it, you don't have to be super fit. You do, if you are over 50, we do have like a, a medical point that have you signed off by the doctor, but that's, that's me out. So <laughs> no, no, no. Most people, we haven't had anyone declined. <laughs> so no one's died. Right. No one's died on this thing yet, Tom, right? You've had people divorce after, but nobody's died yet. <laughs> no one's died yet. I mean, it'd be good publicity. We'll get yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Ever the entrepreneur. Um, Tom, uh, what's the youngest age that you have? On we had a 13 year old. Uh, and, on, and do you go any younger or can you not get the insurance? Actually, no, to tell a lie. We just did our first family trip in April, which was we had 10 year olds on it. But 10 year olds, I think, ten, and, and to be honest, it was a little bit too tough for these 10 year olds. They did wig out and lose it. <laughs> 
was going to yeah. make other people yeah. Yes, a bit. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, what, when they couldn't, did, could they, could you not sculpt, um, you know, like a Nintendo Switch out of a piece of palm tree or something <laughs> like that for them to play on? Okay, uh, thank you, gentlemen. This has been amazing this morning. It has been the morning of the entrepreneurs for sure. And what's possible when people overcome the um, difficulties, basically, that the government sets up for you or that we set up for ourselves when we lock ourselves in uh, cubicles in, in corporations? Uh, and lovely to hear the sort of you know, origin story of what you're doing. Uh, there, Tom. Uh, so uh, some excellent thoughts here from Squire of the Shires, I think, on this entrepreneurial uh, vibe this morning. Uh, builders are projecting something forward into the future, mainly through their own imagination. They get to create now for a family's dream of a time to come. I think that uh, encapsulates a lot of what we've been talking about this morning and going up against the forces against that. Um, so well done, Anna. Well done, Bobby. And well done, Tom, this morning. And Michael, of course, as well. And Mrs. M here. All um, entrepreneurs. I don't employ people. <laughs> you, you, and you won't, I suspect, as well. No, and absolutely look, not. <laughs> gentlemen, you're being compared to Moses now. Yeah, I saw <laughs> that. It's so nice. <laughs> when Moses had to find people to oversee the construction of the tabernacle, he didn't pass around a sign-up list. And the Portuguese government weren't there either, were they, to enforce certain <laughs> kinds of working conditions? Is that uh, what happened to him? For better or for worse. Uh, he chose craftsmen whom were gifted with skills and intelligence. What a great note to end on. So yeah, why don't we have a final thought from the entrepreneurs gathered among us? Michael, thank you for bringing Tom. Uh, how would you like to send people into the weekend? My pleasure. Well, I think it just it just goes to show, and I can say the same for Bobby as well, because I know you know he's built he's built a fabulous, fabulous business too. But um, you know, when it sounds like a cheesy thing to say, but when you do put your mind to it, you really can accomplish anything you want. Anything is possible. And I think it's a great reminder to know that, you know, you don't even necessarily have to go for a conventional business. You can just choose something based on a, like in Tom's case, a childhood dream that he had, that he just wanted to explore and see the world and not be stuck to this conventional method of having to work nine to five in an office and just use his brain and logic and created this crazy business idea but it's been so successful so i think it's a great it's a great lesson to anyone that anything really is possible and the, and the crazier it sounds to you and other people perhaps probably the, the closer you are to being on the right path sometimes you know or you're just crazy and you never really know well, yeah, that's you? <laughs> until you until you try thank you michael bon fissimana to you tom yeah don't be afraid to take chances in life you know we often um, we often play out the scenario and we think, in, well, you know, that's not going to work out. Why will I even bother? But that's only in our mind. If we don't take the chance, if we don't do things, then we never find out the answer of whether things are possible. And so I always say that, you know, life, life's not a dress rehearsal. This is our one shot. So, you know, give it all you've got. Make it count. I can imagine you saying that with a loincloth on and a machete in your hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, no. Tom, for being here. Really good to meet you. Uh, I'm not imagining it too much, yeah. by the way. And is it all right if I bring my uh, pride mankini to my desert island experience? Which I have to have <laughs> on my desk. Essential kit. Essential kit. <laughs> Mrs. M, what do you say? I think um, the best stuff comes from when we are working with our passions. And so I think if you, if you know, whatever makes you happy and brings you joy, if you engage in that and follow that, um, you're going to create something of value to somebody somewhere. It's it's a crazy one because a lot of people follow their passion, don't end up being very wealthy. However, some of the wealthiest people are the people that have had a, a passion and who have had um, – like a vision that was unstoppable and they just went for it so i just think you follow what brings you joy go for it well follow done, what mrs. makes M. you feel free one thing to matter to you as Thank well you. Mrs. i M. am gonna well, see you some more aren't I? <laughs> yes, I'm, not, I'm not going off to a desert I, oh yeah um i needed to tell you about this thing me and tom have been <laughs> talking about <laughs> whoops uh, okay bobby finally to you no i think um focus of course is everything but also focus why you're doing it um your family and and uh there's no point you know putting all your hours and everything and all your energy into it but because at the end of the day uh, you're not going to lie in your deathbed and wish you worked more you're going to wish you had spent more time with your family etc so there's a reason that you're doing what you're doing and don't lose sight of that and i think that you, your family and your friends that are around you you need to be bring them along and they need to come along but i think that also has to be part of of your vision of what you're doing Amazing. Thank oh, you. What an amazing show. Never, yeah, absolutely. If we could all hug, we would be doing that right now, wouldn't we? Uh, we'd be having a big scrum and then I dare say popping down the pub. Um, excellent to me to, to be with you all this morning. I have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for your birthday wishes. And we'll see you again on Monday. Take care. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao, everybody. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.